Over the past few months, I've received a lot of questions about uh, how people can take better reef tank photos. And I've gone onto the forums and taken a look through the, uh, the photos that people have posted, and I've found that people are actually taking really good photos already. Um, part of the problem that people are having is actually in the post-processing of their images. So um, I'm going to make this little video here just to kind of show some people a couple of quick uh, tips and techniques for getting the most out of the images that they already have. Now I'm going to go through this tutorial doing uh, all my edits in Photoshop CS4. But if you don't have Photoshop, then you can use just about any other photo editor. There's, there isn't anything that's special to Photoshop that I'll be doing here. Um, in fact, a good alternative that's free is GIMP. And GIMP doesn't have all of the features that Photoshop CS4 does, but um, most of what you can do in Photoshop, you can also do in GIMP. You just have to put a little bit more work into it. So, anyway, back to Adobe Bridge. What I'm going to do is just choose a photo that I've taken that um, isn't really very good. Like, like this one. Uh, this one, you can see, it looks all washed out. Uh, the colors aren't very good. Uh, it does have some kind of cool looking polyps here, um, but it's actually a little bit out of focus. There probably isn't anything I can do to uh, make that any better in post-processing, but uh, this is a good average looking photo that I'll see if I can make it look better. So I'll begin by opening this up in Photoshop. Since this is a RAW file, the first step to doing that is actually opening it in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, normally, most of these adjustments that I'll be doing uh, in Photoshop, I would do in Camera Raw first. But for the purposes of this little video, um, it actually is going to make it uh, easier to do them in Photoshop all at once, so I'm just going to click on Open Image and go right over to Photoshop. Okay, now with the image open here in Photoshop, uh, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is take a look at the histogram. The histogram shows how the tones in the photograph are laid out across the available spectrum of tones. So this end shows true black, this end shows true white, and you can see that all of the tones in this photo are actually kind of here in the low mid-tone range. This area is completely empty. This means that there are no true blacks or even really dark shadows in this photo. And you can see the same sort of thing at the top. There are no true whites, and in fact, all of these highlights are pretty minimal. So what I want to do is spread out these tones that I do have across the entire spectrum. And I do that by using a curves adjustment layer. In this case, if you were using GIMP, you would just use the curves command. Uh, directly on the photo. And now what I want to do is move my black point here up to the point where I actually have tones in my photo. So you can see right here if you look close that the tones begin here. This little uh, foothill going up to this mountain of tones uh, it begins right here. So I'm going to move my black slider up to that point. 
you can see already that the tones in the image in the main window over here have gotten darker. And I could probably even move this slider in a little bit further to make sure that I'm getting some true blacks. To uh, make this image display whether I am losing any detail by moving a slider, I hold down the Alt key when I move this little black slider. And as I move it up into the part of the image that has tones, this image displays which detail is being lost. As it turns black, that means that detail is completely being thrown away. And of course, I don't want to throw all, the way, all of that away. But right here, I can see that in the yellow channel, I'm losing a little bit of detail. But I think that's probably OK. I think that's a reasonable amount of, of detail to lose since these, uh, these shadows shouldn't have any real detail anyway. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. I'm going to move my white point down to where I start getting some data. And there is a little bit right here. So I'll slide that down to there. Now I'll do the same little trick. Hold down the Alt key and see what data I'm clipping. And there's really not much. I think that looks about OK. I don't mind losing a couple of pixels. So that's a, a good start. I've got some uh, darker tones, some brighter tones, and um, that, that looks good. And as long as I've got my adjustment layer up here still, I can make any other tonal adjustments that I want to do. So if, for example, I want to make some of these brighter areas a little bit brighter, I can go into my tone curve here, put a point on the line, like so, and push that up to the left. And somewhere in there looks about OK to me. And to darken down those darker tones a little bit, back to where they were, I'll just grab a point lower here on the line and pull that down. And that ends up giving us some nice extra contrast. It actually makes the colors a little bit more vibrant, and the whole thing ends up looking a little bit sharper. OK. And with my basic tonal adjustments made here in my curves layer, uh, the next thing I want to do is remove just a couple of distracting little spots up here in the corner. So first I will select my background layer again, which has the actual image data, and pick my spot healing brush tool. And I'll zoom in just a little bit so that everyone can actually see these spots. And to use the Spot Healing Brush to Tool, all you have to do is click on the spot and paint over them. And that's all there is to it. OK. And I think I just tried removing some dust spots from my monitor, too. But All right, so I'm going to zoom back out. I'm doing that, incidentally, by pressing Control plus and Control minus. Um, and now I want to draw a little bit more attention into these polyps right here. I think those are sort of the focus of this of this image. So to do that, what I want to do is create a vignette. Um, basically, that means that I'm going to be darkening the edges of this photo. And by darkening the edges, it makes this section relatively brighter. And your eye will be drawn to the brighter section of the photograph. So to do that, I'm going to bring up my marquee tool. And 